Father in God, we thanks for having us here today. Um, I'm Rhonda Alfred. I'm the Director of Marketing and Branding at Terrapin General Health System. Um, I've been with Terrapin General for 17 years. Um, one of my first campaigns working with Terrapin General was when we did with our Women's Center and um, got to use some of our employees and campaigns. And then, of course, we have our Cancer Center, our Lifestyle Center, and then um, and now we're just moving into all different services with um, hopefully a wellness center coming online very soon. But um, I did want to point out that I started at Children General before we even had social media. So it was something that we had to um, learn and cultivate and get used to. And at first, we were very, very scared to dip our toe in the water. And now it is a huge part of what we do every day, and we have a full-time person doing it. So I'd like to introduce Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jenna Haydell. I am the marketing and planning coordinator. Um, I handle the social media on a daily basis. I work with our campaigns. I do media placement. Um, that is us. Um, and anything day to day, um, basically, to get our name out. We've recently had a name change, so that was kind of a fun little twist. Um, something that hasn't happened in, I don't know, when? 30 years. Yeah. Like yeah. Um, so, anyway, we thought it'd be fun if everybody kind of went around and said what, social, what your name was and where you worked and what social media um, kind of relates to in your career. So, we kind of Oh, he just said that. We'll start with <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Ricky. I have a company called Trina. I'm a licensed author. Uh, I also have a nonprofit. Uh, social media, I uh, hand that over to Russian media. Brian does everything for me. And okay. I do about a thousand a month. And uh, it comes back a lot. I mean, nice. a lot. Just, yeah. Uh, really nice job. I'm very temporary. I can pick up from the social media so it pays for itself. I haven't gotten an Instagram. Just got into like daily body and basically coaches me on all that. For my true business as well as after the mission. So uh, I let him nice. it. And we're going to talk more about that in how the social media versus outsource social media. I love the video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has a tiny bit of that. And what's your name? My name is Sheila Mother. Sheila Mother. Steve Alvaro with Regent Bank, and we've got a whole big department full of social media folks. I just don't know enough, so I want to learn. Yeah, so Regions, is that national that y'all do it, or is it local that y'all do it? No, it's all national. That's it's all been on Birmingham. That's right. Uh, we cover the 16 state area. Oh, wow. Yeah. Katie Anderson, I do our social media marketing for me to build traffic. Christy Duhay, I'm with Crescent Tech, we're an IT firm. I do, basically, I'm helping assist launching and branding and networking of our companies. So we've been around for a while, but it's kind of like our first big push on social media platform. Awesome. Okay. Um, of justice, um, I'm a marketing assistant at Touch Action Clinic. Do y'all use social media currently? Uh, well, we're not a new, so yes, we do. I make the bodies. She, we kind of work together. She does the social media. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, okay. It's kind of easy. <laughs> um, I'm Kat Cardell, and as she mentioned, um, we're marketing assistants at Touch Action Clinic. Um, we do a lot of social media stuff. Um, I handle one end and Justice handles the other, but as of now, we just do a lot of Facebooking um, to get a lot of stuff out to our clients and patients with upcoming uh, events that we have going on. So we're still learning, but we're excited to do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 so it changes daily. So. My name is Carissa Benoit, I'm with Holiday Inn in Homa. We have a global marketing team that handles um, what the direction is in terms of what their branding is and their campaigns are, and they handle our brand websites with a lot of, called basically like content managers, so we kind of have resources and, and stock to go to for help with uh, marketing text and photos and things like that. And we have the um, technology and the platforms built in already for the brand website. Our website is not existent right now where it goes because the hotel is closed. So we're called Close to Arrivals. You can't book with us. But whenever we need to launch, I just have to plug some things in. But all of those things have to be plugged in. So it's down to the, you know, down to the team. You need to know if we have an indoor pool or an outdoor pool. 
and that extends to the social media also because they know that it has to exist now. We finally got on board and acknowledged it, so we have a lot of guidance in that. And it was mildly active before. Each individual hotel was in charge of their own social media, pretty much. But we have a whole global team with like global brains and right. global money yeah, behind it. Cool. So we have the resources, resources push that. Yeah. yeah, but each hotel has to you know take charge and like opening up their Instagram or making a you know profile and doing it. So now I'm trying to get a little bit of a we're closed and don't have rooms to offer. So it's good. It's time to practice. All right. I'm Tish Aker. I'm uh, with Dan Moss. We have one walking team, but um, I, I'm the uh, executive assistant to the vice president. One of those being the marketing vice president, and I'm also chairperson of the foundation. So mainly here for uh, just information to guide the foundation communications. Okay. Good morning, my name is Pat Arno. <clears throat> I am the Silver Method Instructor for Louisiana. Uh, it's individual business to customer person. I uh, have just, I'm getting back into the <coughs> teaching since 2016 because of all the stuff that's been on in my life, exciting and not so. <laughs> and um, I am, I've got someone working on the web page. And I need to get it out right now. The only thing I have is on the Silver International web page. So that's working there, but I need to build mine up to be able to um, entice the people to come take the class or meet with them or whatever. Right, and that's a great way. So you need to be able to drive people to your website mm -hmm. to sign up and do other things. Mm -hmm. Great. Hi, I'm Rebecca McNamara. I'm a turnkey title. We do real estate closings. Um, locally in Home Run to mainly the region go all over the all over Louisiana. Um, and I pretty much do all the marketing. So we had somebody for a little while but now I'm in that position so we are trying I am trying to learn everything that I can to really get us out there. Awesome. Judy Smart, I'm an individual chamber member, I'm retired from the state and um, basically I've Make social media for fun and for all the many volunteer projects I work on. So I figured I can still learn a little bit. I'm Anna Marlowe, I'm with the class of Terrebonne. Um, I am a marketing coordinator and office manager. So I manage our web page, our social media, um, I do the graphics for any ad placements, um, and I help this one recruit volunteers. For our program. Sol Ray is outreach and training coordinator. Um, she does what she needs to do. Whatever <laughs> <laughs> she tells you to do. They have ideas and they're like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, John Price with Sunbelt Business Brokers. Uh, we're a national company. I have a home office, just me. We're starting out in social media, uh, so we just start with the Facebook page and kind of go from there. Okay. I'm Jim Schexmutter. I'm with the Office of Coastal Support at Nail State University, and we are in the process of building a coastal center and are renovating the old Capital One building in downtown Thibodeau for the body of the incubator. So I'm trying to learn what I can to help promote those two projects here you know, on our campus. Uh, Barry Lebeau with Blue Water Rubber and Gasket from Battle Street. Um, currently no social media, just a web page and outside sales crew still to kind of push our product uh, here to learn. Okay. Amy Babbitt, I'm the CFO of Carol and GYN. We currently have Facebook, LinkedIn, Alignable, but we're starting to add more aesthetic product and aesthetic services and products and products and also we can do a Right. Yes, Hello everyone, I'm Sarah Parson. Um, we're salon owners. Our new salon is Brush and Blow Dry Bar in Homa. Um, and we also have our second location, well, our first location downtown Thibodeau, so welcome. <laughs> um, that's awesome news. <coughs> Congratulations. Um, I mean, marketing, we had this conversation. I mean, it's just so, it's overwhelming, it's intimidating, and especially being in the industry.
industry that we're in, there's so much competition, as well as other businesses as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just trying to fit in, I guess you can say. Like, you know, I agree exactly. What drives, how can we drive more of our guests to our website? So um, being salon owner, um, a stylist, the marketing, and many hats, um, we just want to make sure that we're making life easier, but efficient for our guests as well. Um, so if you want me to come check this out. <laughs> Your page is great. I follow you. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. So I think we can all agree that marketing and Facebook and social media and websites are the key right now. Um, it's it's a changing world every day, and we just have to keep up and and follow with our tone and make sure that we're getting our brand out because everyone's on their phone and everyone is trying to find that business. So you want them to find you first. Um, you have to use those tools. Yes. Give you a little insight about how the hospital does it. Yes. So basically today what we're going to cover is the benefits of using social media, developing a social media marketing campaign, monthly social media calendar, which is great to have as a planning tool, in-house social media versus should you outsource your social media, and social media use in a rebranding campaign. Okay. So the benefits of using social media are you can reach a large amount of people fast. So that's the, the biggest deal. I just kind of wanted to go over some stats just to give you an idea of the impact that social media does have. So almost five million, billion, <laughs> thank you, Jenna, um, people all over the country are using social media. 72% of Americans use social media, and they spend two hours, almost two and a half hours a day on social media. So that's a, a huge effort. So especially if you have products and services, it's a great way to sell products and services. $154 billion is being spent um, to advertise. Um, global internet users um, who buy something online is over 60%. And um, people who buy digital ad space, space from social media is close to 30, a little bit of 30%. So these are just some statistics from our social media. We uh, have about 15,000 Facebook likes and followers. We have close to 15,000 to 16,000 as well. Um, we are very active on Facebook and Instagram. However, there's other platforms that are gaining um, momentum, especially with younger audiences. Um, our audiences break down to almost 83 percent female and then 18 percent male. They're like 33 to 45 years old, and the best time for to post something is Tuesdays at 9 o'clock. Another thing that's so great about social media is the trackability of it. And you can go back and track just about anything about the best times to post, who's looking at your posts. And other, and even little targets and demographics there as well. Just a quick question: the nine o'clock Tuesday, nine o'clock, is that for what you have deemed as best for you? Oh, for in our demographic, right. it's it's from our statistics, from our posts and our engagements and our. Right. If we notice that at nine o'clock, that's when the most people are looking at our stuff. So I guess Monday they're keeping up from the weekend. By Tuesday they're ready to find out what's going on. Yes, oh, yes, that is our algorithms. algorithms. Yes, based on our the algorithms. Okay. What we're yes. seeing, what we're Correct. So this is just a, one of our most popular posts. It's the New Year's baby, the first baby born in the new year. So it was just an organic post. It reached almost 30,000 people. It had a lot of engagements, a lot of comments, and then shares. That's another thing. You want people to share your post because it's like a personal endorsement, endorsing your product. So anyway, in a, in a lot of clips too. So a lot of years of yeah. You know, <laughs> who they are, where they come from, people want to see who had that first baby. So, all right. So just some advertising tips to to um, think about when you're using social media. So you have to know what you're trying to achieve, your business objectives. Like, are you trying to get engagement? Or are you trying to get interactions, um, likes, and then you also have to use a call to action, whether that be call this number, download this <laughs> link, you know, that type of thing, drive them to the website. You have to know your target audience. So who are you trying to reach? 
change. I mean, healthcare usually is a woman-driven business because women are the healthcare decision makers for the family. So we typically target women. Um, so you let your organic posts and your inform your ads be. Make sure, as Joe mentioned, the tone and the photography and things like that, make sure everything matches. What you're posting organically, make sure you're advertising your, your ads. And a boosted post is going to be an ad, uh, whatever you can on that post. But just make sure it's all cohesive. And then, again, pay for what matters. Are you looking for impressions? Are you, like, for brand awareness? You just want to get as many people seeing this information as possible. Or do you want engagement? Do you want people to come to your business between this time and this time for, you know, the first 25 people get a goodie bag or whatever? So just make sure, you know, what you're trying to do there. And then mobile, design your ads with mobile um, users in mind. So uh, most everybody, I think most, like 75 to 80% of our users come to our website or come to our social um, site from their mobile device. So be, be cognizant of that. Also, you can test your ads. To, um, to make sure which one's going to be the most effective. Like we just did this with our a newsletter, but you can do it with social. So we had two, we had the same newsletter, but we had two different titles in that subject. One was like, want to have a healthy summer, or like we asked a question, and the other was, find out about how to have a healthy summer. And then we, we placed the newsletter, and then we could have like a voting thing to see who likes A or who likes B. And so we released a certain portion of the newsletter. And then based on who liked uh, what, we released the other portion of it. So it's just trying to see what your audience is going to engage with the most. And then, of course, the measurement is also going to report it on them. And it's easy to do. I mean, there's all kinds of tracking information in um, the Facebook program. OK, now we're talking about you know, know what you're trying to achieve. <coughs> Basically, whatever your campaign goal is, you're going to be paying it based on a certain <coughs> method. And one is cost per click. So how many people are clicking on your ad, cost per conversion, cost per thousand impressions, or cost per video view. So those are just kind of some stats to be cognizant of. Um, that, that kind of wraps up that section. What we're going to do is, I have about, well, we have about five sections, and we'll go through them and then ask any questions. And please, feel free to answer, I mean, ask any questions while we're presenting as well. So, so anybody has any questions on that? I have a question. Okay. Um, on the previous slide, what is it? Oh, the cost for like, <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to kind of explain that. Um, I'm going to okay. show some results. And you see. find that on Facebook. Yes. Gotcha. You'll see. Once you place a campaign, it'll give you these stats. Gotcha. So it's more based upon a campaign as opposed to, I guess, like just a normal post. Yes, it's okay. based on a paid post. Yeah, it's, it's, gotcha. it's when you're putting money towards it. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, Facebook is free, but you can always sure. find a way to spend some money. money. So <laughs> uh, there's a way that you can spend money on it to get a new program. And okay, so, like that. so that's for the clicks. The call is that part. different from boost? Like boosting your posts? Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to tell you how much okay. for paid posts. Cool. And I do want to mention, too, this is something. Um, so, geofencing. I mean, you can get down, if, when you're talking about targeting, you can get down to people who are in a certain zip code area. And so, somebody it could be outside of your business, and you can geo target them by where they are and then serve them up an ad. So it's kind of scary. Yeah, it is kind of scary. But anyway, it's basically any, if you've ever been on on social media and you've been served up an ad, like we always say, they're listening. If you're talking about Adidas shoes and then the next ad is Adidas <laughs> shoes, <laughs> they're constantly listening and serving up. So if we were interested in trying to find somebody outside the hospital, which we haven't gotten that nailed down into, or they're saying like if they're walking out of Best Buy. They can, they've got these areas that are like, oh, they're interested in electronics, so we're going to serve them up an electronic ad. So right. it gets very detailed, more than just an average. We were saying that you were able to do it, but we were able to do the same question. Yes. Right. Agents right. and right. Right. Yeah. You can drill down very personally. Yeah. People that shop at a certain store, people that get a certain magazine. It's no, like, you, you can even go to my competitors at codes and try to lure them away from there. So we know they're going to be walking in this area or in this area, serve up your ads. 
So do you guys do that? Like you guys like kind of hone in on X, Y, Z? We have done geofencing for the video. Yes. <laughs> Pretty sneaky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do that in a social media marketing campaign. It's not as difficult as you think. So, all right. So basically, we were just asking, we were asking about boosted posts and paid posts. So those are your mar social media marketing campaigns. Two different things. So again, for a boosted post, it's just an organic post that you have, and you want to you get a little message. You want to boost this post, and you can say yes. And you're trying. This is for when you want to optimize page likes, comments, or just brand awareness. So you want as many people to see this as you can. Now, paid ad, and you, you put money behind the boosted post, and it, it doesn't take a lot of money. We're talking about budgets too. It really doesn't take that much money to get a lot of visibility. And then paid ads are done through the ad manager on Facebook or Instagram, and um, that's more if you want to be taking action. Like, go to your website, download this app, purchase this product, or something like that. Okay, so you two types. And you'll see the word, if you make the post, it's a little blue box to the bottom, and it says boost post. So you can click on that, and it'll, it'll walk you through it. It's, it's very easy. Um, you put a credit card in, or however you want to pay for it, and you'll, it'll ask you, what's your demographics? How old? Oh, how old do you want to, your target audience to be? Um, where do you want them to live? And it'll show you a radius. Like you could say 20 miles from your from your place of business. It's, it's very generic. Um, you can also select maybe some interests that they may have. They, do they like Bob Marley? Do they like it? just random stuff? It's the craziest things of what they can find. Um, <clears throat> typically for a boosted post, we may throw 100 bucks behind a post and just kind of see how far it gets. Um, it'll start to serve, and it's funny because I will boost it from the Terrebonne account, and then randomly I'll see it on my account. So I was in that demographic, so I know that it's working. I'll get served up the ad. Um, I can see how many likes. It, it gets more reach. It gets more likes. It gets it shows up on more feeds um, versus if I just posted it and didn't put any money behind it. So that's kind of a little right. Because if we just post an ad, just the people who are following us are going to see it. But if we how often do y'all boost? Do y'all boost every post? No, no, we don't want to be too much <laughs> campaigns. Like, say, we normally run um, a campaign that's a multimedia campaign. So, we'll have a TV ad, our print ad, and social is going to be part of that. We'll boost that, you know, clinic ad. Depending on the messaging we're trying to get out, always brands. We always yeah. want our brand to show up on people's feeds. Um, also, if we're trying to push a certain doctor or clinic to get more patients, we'll push that. Um, anytime we want something that we think is uh, interesting, we'll put some money behind it and make sure it gets it. And also, I mean, boosting posts, surprisingly, it's a little bit inexpensive, too. I mean, when we boost posts every now and then, it's like only $7 for like four days. Oh, really? See, yeah. I can't yeah. show the year what other... What, we didn't know in the beginning, so we were like, let's just throw yeah, 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. And then we started to throw 100. You can see the money mm -hmm. difference. It's not And it has different reaches to each price, too. I mean, for a right. bigger reach, of course, it would be more expensive. But to just reach around the community, it would be very inexpensive. And a really funny um, point, too, that we're going to be actually um, boosting our wellness expo coming up. And we're actually going to be doing friends of the people who like our page. Yes. So if you like our page right now, your friends are going to see that that ad. So if you hear about it, that's why. <laughs> so is that how like you pick like that you also want friends of? Yes. That's what one in yeah, it's like in one of the selections. And we we're doing that because of um you know it's a lot of business partners too like it's a lot of network and that's what the chamber is very very much networking. So that's why we want to try to reach friends because you probably have some other businesses who you network with that are friends on your page. Correct. So also with the share, it's basically somebody doing that for free. So if I posted something and all of y'all shared it, now all of your friends are going to see that. So that's like a free way for, so that's why people like you to share their page because now it's showing up on your feed who I may not have been friends with Terrible General, but you are and you've shared it. So now I'm like, oh, Terrible General. And now I may go to Terrible General's page and like them because now I'm like, oh, that's interesting content. So the more people share it, the more you're getting it out there, friends of your friends, then it's, it's kind of a domino effect. So that makes sense. 
you see a lot of people like that have contests and they're like, oh, the editor will win, like this post, share it with two friends. Yeah. You know, and that's why they get up in these contests because they're now getting more customers. Exactly. So. <laughs> and anyway, so these posts can show up in your feed or you can put it on your story too. Okay. Yeah. Is that somewhere in there? Yeah, it's going to come yeah. up in more detail. Actually, the next one. Okay. So the different types of paid, paid um, media or ads. So on Facebook <laughs> ads, you can do a photo, post a photo with you know, a message, a video, stories, which is that, that top part that comes up before the, um, before the piece underneath, a carousel, which is scrolling photos, a slideshow, a collection, or a messenger. And then Instagram has some of the same things. But then they just have IG, Instagram, TV, and then you can post on as well. So. Yeah, I can go into a little bit more detail with that if y'all need some. some Sorry, I love yeah. asking questions, y'all know this. <laughs> um, what would you say is more effective as far as video goes between Facebook and Instagram? Because I know Instagram, a lot of people are swiping down, but now they have IGTV, which a lot of people watch. Um, they actually have a tab for that now. Yes. So do you find that Instagram is more effective or Facebook? So I, personally, and I, I think probably across the board, I think Instagram is a younger crowd. Mm -hmm. um, I think that personally, I love Instagram. I don't like Facebook. I think it's too much. I think people know too much, but that's my personal life. But for a business, I think it's great because then everybody can see it. You know, Instagram's a little bit more private. You have to know the person in order to see the photos. Facebook is opposite. Your friends can see other people's friends. So it's a little bit more broad. Um, so back to the stories and the, and the IGTV. I love a story because it's quick. I can tap through. Those are the little bubbles at the top. You'll see people's icons. Um, they can put up, I think it's like a 10 second. You can have a ton of them. You can just click it. Um, and you can click through if you like it, or you can swipe to the next person. So it's quick. It's to the point. You're probably reaching a younger crowd there. Um, we also do IGTV just to throw it out there. We uh, host a, um, a weekly uh, show with HGV. And it's about a seven minute show. So that's a longer. IGTV is more like a video. Um, whether or not people are going there to watch it or Facebook, I think we get more likes on Facebook because it's an older crowd. People on Instagram are looking for quick. They don't have time for a seven minute movie. Um, but it's also another way to get it out there. So And um, utilizing the stories on Instagram too, it has a wonderful analytics as far as if you can see if someone just swiped to the next one. You can see if they completely skipped over your story. Right. They can also you can also see if they sent it to someone as well and saved it. So then you kind of know. Oh, then you'll you'll know what's getting traction with people, what they're relating to. Was it too long? Was it not long enough? Most of the time it's too long. But anyway, <laughs> um, like yeah. So it's unbelievable the kind of you can add little things, things to it. You can add music to it. It makes it more interactive. You can story. Um, and down. Instagram too, um, this is something that I guess is fairly new too, is that you could do hi highlighted stories on your Instagram page too. So if you have events, like we have on ours, if you go look at ours, we have one for GMLs, we have one for nonprofit donations, we have one for ribbon cuttings. So once you post in that story, you can add it to those highlights so everyone can, you can tap through it and see your a year in review, basically. It stays. Otherwise, that's the other thing with stories is it disappears. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people use stories personally to just post a picture and it disappears. Where you can you can't go back and say, oh, uh, Joey posted some him being at a party last week, and you're like, well, it's gone because it's only there for 24 hours in a story. Versus if it's a post, it's there forever. Um, so yeah, you can also save them if you want them to be able to go back on your highlight reel. So yeah, I know it's a very it's a broad overview. It's it's yeah, intense, but um, but there's a lot of information out there too. Does anybody use a platform? We we'll use Hootsuite, and that's where we manage what we're going to post at what time. We use a ledger, and it's pretty it's legit. I mean, I, I feel like Facebook and Instagram don't they have that? Is it a free option to where you can time it? Yeah. Yes. yes. Facebook. Okay. okay. Well, that's yeah. good. Too. Yeah, but because yeah. It does get if you want to take it a step further and you're managing multiple accounts, something like Hootsuite, and you can do a free download or you can pay a subscription and it's very minimal, but that way you can have everything at once. Yeah, it'll post 
everything at once, and then you can you can set stories it. Exactly. and times and um, specific signs and stuff like that. But it does get privacy because you have to pay for each platform. I think. So, or per you year, know, switch to Zoom. Yeah, there's a free one. Yeah. Oh, good to know. You just yeah. have one. You can write it down. Yeah, yeah, it's actually great. So there's a bunch of different columns in Hootsuite. You'll actually schedule a column. You'll have a column once it posts. You can see it post. There's a column anytime somebody tags you. You can see that. There's a column um, if people are trying to message you. There's a bunch of different columns. So once you learn it, it's pretty easy, but then you can kind of manage all of your social media. Right. Okay, that's good. I think it's, it's also important to mention, too, because uh, you had brought up the... Um, I think it's business book or some business suite on Facebook where you can time the post and everything. Um, one thing that I've learned is do not connect it to your Instagram because it's going to format on Instagram as it does on Facebook. Therefore, the pictures are going to either be stretched or not. Not, not, not anymore. Instagram. You can customize it. Oh, you can now? Yeah, because we use Facebook Manager and it has our, our link, our account links. And so we just have to make sure Okay. Format. Yeah, because that's why I stopped using it because I was connecting yeah. both of them and it was just formatting it very wrong. Or like if I was to do a video, it wouldn't do the video on right. Instagram. Hmm. Thanks. Let's try that. Okay, so here's an example of one of ours. Um, telling more about what our brand stands for. So basically, we had a $50 budget, okay? Um, we reached almost 2,500 people. We had some engagement. Um, the audience that was most engaged is 18 to 65 plus, and it cost us dollar forty-two. So per uh, clips, cost per lead, clip, cost per lead clip. So basically, you just put the budget up, they, all the um, stats populate, and then they give you a cost on how much it costs. So it breaks down everything for you in the platform. And if you notice at the top under it says sponsored at the top, that's how you know it's an ad. Um, otherwise, it would just show up on your feed. So if that something shows up on your feed, you're like, I don't follow them, and it says sponsored, it's because you've been served up that ad. Is that someone mm -hmm. clicking the link to get to your Facebook page or clicking the link that's in your ad to say get to your website or whatever you want them to go? Clicking the link to that Facebook page. You see that at the bottom? Whatever the call to action. Yeah, that was our call to action. Was click to the website. So that's what you want to do. That's a pretty toss effect in there. Here's an example of a boosted post. This was for our pulmonology clinic. Um, we had a 10, a 10 day budget of $50. We pushed in this 5,000 people. Um, the engagement was pretty good. This was a cost us a little bit more and gave us a breakdown. So actually more men than women, just by slightly, um, paid attention to that ad and reacted to that ad. So just two different examples. Yes. So an organization like yourself, um, you got the cost per link click. You might get to it later on, and, and that's fine, but how do you guys recognize or see your, uh, your return on investment like this? So really for this, we're not, okay, it's good. a complete that's mix, and, and you know, we spend a lot of money on advertising, um, but we're, 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 at, we're sending it in different places, so we're not going to say, well, we need to know what we got out of this $50, I mean, it's $50 in the grand scheme of things, you know, did it make an appointment, maybe, or did it perk somebody's interest, maybe, did it just get us a like on Facebook, maybe, so we don't know, but it's kind of putting our, our name out everywhere we go, TV, the newspaper, the radio, the you know, social media everywhere. So it's a, it's a complete mix um, of everything that we do. So, but I mean, you can track it if you really like yeah, it. Yeah, you're going to spend more than $50 exactly. on a poll. I mean, we, just, can, we could, we um, could, I mean, we get so detailed to where they can click on the phone, that phone number, and the call goes to the office. Then we have recordings of whoever answers at the office. And it's an appointment scheduled or not an appointment. And then did it come into the appointment? You know what I mean? So you can get down to that level. But for this particular one, it was just okay. We got them to to click. You know. Mm -hmm. Turn it up. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. I just man, we're going back to part of what the gentleman was talking about. You're setting your budget for fifty dollars. You're getting the cost per lead click. 
that's based on the number of clicks you got. Correct. Is, is that fifty dollars in that system to where it just continually shows you if you get more clicks, it's a lesser amount. You get no. to a point where it's going to stop. It's going to stop once it reaches fifty dollars. Right. That's why the budget's gone, and right. this is your result for what. For your 50 bucks, these are your results. But what I'm hearing you say is that it's going to cost $4.17 for every click. So does that mean it's the 12 clicks that's costing that? Or do they have an amount of the With clicks? the budget, in that amount of days, the number of clicks we got, that's how they wrote that down. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> because I'm hearing what you're saying. On the previous slide, it showed you had $50. You had a little bit more clicks, so right. the cost per click was a little less. Is and you take the reach into consideration too. But you, they cool. set the duration when they put their budget in there at fifty. They set it for ten days, and they ended up with that many. Okay, it's based on it's the It's an estimate, right? They apply the formula to it. Okay, well, I'm trying to figure out where is the line that tells it. Right, it's like thirteen and. Yeah, it's more of an estimate. Yeah, and they'll tell you that estimate. Like, if you say you want to do $50 for 10 days, they'll say you'll reach between this many and this many people. Mm -hmm. So if you want to up it, you'll get more reach if you want to lower it. Okay. Yeah, it's all a range. It's just a... Um, one thing that I wanted to point out, too, is um, I see that the reach is um, 4,609, but the actual engagement was 13. And this is something that a lot of PR people may not agree with me on, but I find that, you know, granted certain posts may change this, this opinion, but I want to say reach is really more important than engage, engagement. Engagement looks good. It looks great. But you want to, when you're boosting a post, your overall goal is to try to get people to see it. Correct. So when you're and looking at awareness. Yes. You know, being aware. Yes. Yeah, so but that's when why. When they do need it, they're going to remember and go. I've heard of a lot of people that's like, oh, well, I get hardly any likes. And I'm like, well, what's your, your reach? And they were like, oh, well, like 12,000. I'm like, well, you're, you know, it's an older generation on Facebook too. So not all the time they're going to like it or love it or something. Or they may even just save it, you know. So you really want to focus on that reach. And a lot of people kind of disagree with that. But I, I think it's really important to look at that reach more than engagement. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And that's our goal too, to reach the most people. Okay, here's an example of one of our print ads. It was for this high tech product, navigational um, bronchoscopy that we have for detecting lung cancer. So you kind of think, oh, how do I make an ad for social media? Basically, we take whatever graphic we had from our print ad, and then we use some of the copy and use a call to action, and then come up with uh, a post. And that's what it looked like. So it just has the copy from the ad, has the text, and then the graphic. Where did you link? Did you link back to an article or did you just link to, to our site? website where you can actually schedule an appointment or get more information? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you want to kind of keep your social media wanting and asking for more. You don't want to put the whole copy there because you're not going to read it. I mean, in this day and age, people are busy and they don't have time to be on their phone and read all the articles. Yeah. So you just want to put the main points in order to get them to click back in our situation to our website to schedule an appointment for them. And this one had a pretty large reach of over 50,000. So. Is that because the budget was higher? Maybe? Possibly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, again, <clears throat> formula. Um, it may have been more interesting. It may have. I know, more men. This is like, this is not the norm. Usually women are the ones that are more. But I guess because it looked kind of high tech and it was like a GPS. social media is just going to keep continuing to increase. Because as you see, like the print media is 
are just becoming obsolete. And so, and most people get their news and everything from their phones. And what do you mean by product versus service? So if you have a product, like if you're selling a bricks and mortar type thing, rather than a service, like an appointment with a physician. Yeah, we're more of a service. Um, a product would be well, yeah. kind of hurt. I didn't know what social media meant. <clears throat> like, well, my social media has been break down. Are you saying like for a service they should be more towards 18? Like what is that 18 percent? That's about 18 percent of how much money you spend on marketing. This is just the average. Like the, yeah, this is just the average. <clears throat> All right. So when you're thinking about a social media budget, these are the things you need to kind of take into consideration that are going to cost you time and money. So somebody's got to create the content, come up with the post. Um, what kind of software and tools might you need? Like we were talking about that Hootsuite platform, or um, designers, or just hardware to use. And sometimes you have graphic subscriptions where you can get photographs, like Shutterstock, and those kind of things. And then paid social media campaigns. What kind of budget are you going to use? Like, okay. We're going to have 100 posts a year at $50, you know, okay, we're going to our budget for $5,000. What kind of training? There's all kinds of training that's offered because it's a constantly changing industry. And so you can get things online, you can get things through Hootsuite, I mean, through your local chamber. So, you know, you want to invest in some time in training. And then your strategy and development, you need to put some time into that and do you want to designate one employee to do this or are you going to like give this duty to somebody else on your team and it's kind of like they're you know they're juggling social with juggling their other duties so when you're creating your budget you just need to think about it again what is your goal do you want impressions do you want people to just see it do you want them to take action um and you, you can look at previous budgets uh, if you don't have a previous budget, just start small. Just you know, put a little into it, investment into it, and see where it goes. Because you can track it month to month. These stats are going to be there. So you can quickly go back and look. And then create a strategy. And then create your budget. So we have a little budget worksheet, too. Yeah. You know. I'll, I'll about to say, though, I, I think that's what's great about social media. It's free. Yes, you can put a budget behind it. But in the grand scheme of things, you can do it for free, too. So I think if you make it your baby and, and, and put your content out there, you can still get great results not spending any money. Um, physical money boosting. I mean, you may have to pay somebody to do it, or you can do it yourself. It's just start small and, and, and build from there. So don't be scared to try it. I guess it's a thing. Don't be scared. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this section? I do. I have a question. Um, so we've been juggling back and forth. This might kind of be off subject, but um, like billboards. What's your thoughts on billboards in comparison to putting all of that money into social media? Well, you've got a lot of billboards. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it, I'm sure it differs. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, I actually did billboards. I used to sell billboards too. So I believe in billboards. Yeah. Uh, especially right. as a driver, um, but for your situation, maybe even as a just a directional. Mm -hmm. For us, we needed brand awareness. We needed sure. everybody to know that we are out there, and, and we can rotate our messaging and, and get different doctors' faces and stuff. But again, we're a large scale. Absolutely, yes, they're a larger budget. Um, but digital billboards have made it so easy because you can run multiple messages and switch it out easy. You know, if you have something printed. And you know you want to sure. stay up for a good amount. And Sarah, you have a billboard right up the road from y'all too, right? Yes. Right in the corner. So, um, the as Jenna was saying with the directional, maybe you can have like an arrow pointing to your. Yes. Yeah. Where you're located? I'm gonna say Charles, right oh, okay. next to like majestic. Yeah. Very expensive yeah. billboard design. Yeah. Um, so we did that where we mm -hmm. are seeing our return on investment in our billboard. So we put all that money into our social media and doing outreach and doing like um, signs and postcards and mailings. And we got a better return because they are so targeted. I mean, they service, I mean, I'm sure you want the whole carriage, but for us, it turned out to be a better investment yeah. just because we're so small. And it's trackable. Yeah. You can see right. how much money you're spending and how many people you're reaching. We don't, I mean, we can look at traffic counts of how many people drive by a certain billboard sure. every day, but, you know. Especially you graphics. 
Yeah. One of the things that every time um, I think of, I, I think it would be great to do some advertising. I'm giving a shout out to them. Um, point of view. Oh, yeah, yeah that would be a great yeah, opportunity so. to advertise in, the, in those magazines. Yeah, exactly. yeah I think it's a complete mix. Mm -hmm. uh, I think if you have to sprinkle your money everywhere because you don't know what people are, are looking into. So, um, that's yeah. yeah. All right, Jen's getting into this one. Okay, so I don't think I um, our monthly social media marketing calendar, <laughs> this is kind of what this looks like. Uh, we have created a Excel spreadsheet that's very basic. Uh, we've got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and we haven't talked much about Twitter. Twitter doesn't do much for us. It's something that we do just to do because it's free, but we don't get a lot of return on Twitter. Uh, Twitter's more sports and... The news kind of takes over, you know. Political. <laughs> um, yeah, for a hospital, we tweet here and there, but it doesn't give us much... Uh, so we, we sprinkle our content there, but it's not something that we put all of our eggs into, for sure. Um, so this is an example of how we um, keep up with what we're going to post. We look at the month, or I look at the month, and I um, kind of decide what we want to put, and then I create the content, I drop it in there, and then I take this content and move it over to Hootsuite, and then I provide a graphic with it, and then it's scheduled. So uh, I organize it. I actually keep it in black. Once it's scheduled and I turn it to blue, that's just kind of my way to organize it. Um, so I know that it's been up and I know that it's in Hootsuite. Um, I can change dates around once it's in Hootsuite, but it's easier to do it on the calendar just to kind of keep organized. We do like to have a post each day. I kind of was asked to do that. I still think that's a lot. I like to have some days where we don't have a lot of posts. Um, but then something comes up or something closes or we're given a COVID shot and we need to post something. So some days we may have two posts, sometimes three, which is crazy excessive, but um, it happens. So I like to only have one post a day, if that's anything. If not, I like to have some breaks. Um, you'll see that Saturday, Sunday content is not um, as looked at. So on those days, I like to put um, a person or somebody local, a face. I think that um, an award on those days or, or something that people are going to connect to those days versus uh, a brand ad because on a Saturday you could care less. But you may stop to look at, oh, Susie Q won so and so. So let me stop and look at that. So that's kind of the point <coughs> behind there. Um, uh, any questions on that? Yeah. yeah. How far ahead are you planning your calendar? One month. One month before it gets crazy because things change so much and you have to be flexible. Um, I have like some certain points that I like to hit each month, um, different areas of the hospital, and I'll go to detail that. But um, that's kind of how I start with my calendar. And then I know like Mondays, we like to put our to your health series out there. So Mondays, I kind of keep that. Wednesdays, we like to do our wellness posts. So I do that. It's kind of how I organize the calendar. And then I have extra days and I can throw in um, fillers there, like health tips or an award or something like I feel like that's kind of where we're at. I have someone that kind of helps me with social media, but he has a main job. Right. So helping us is kind of like a side thing. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I'm trying to get with him. Like we just had a call and I was like, okay, the second week of every month, I want to sit down and go through topics. Mm -hmm. And then the last week of the month, I want you to present me what you're be posting. Because we just do one post a week. So it's only four things. Oh, yeah. But I feel like because we haven't had anything said, it's a, it's, I don't want to say that. It's like, well, okay, you need to just do something. But, like, he needs to be able to jump ahead enough to be ready to plan for well, next month. Something because, is, like, yes. don't even have anything posted this week yet, and we're Thursday. Yeah. Like, because he has other things on his plate, you know? So, trying to figure yeah, out. Yes, I definitely think planning is key. Because yeah. um, <laughs> no, I feel like it's kind of just something thrown together. Yeah. Because I told him I want to post. Yeah. 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 Account, you know? Just something you do with him. That's interesting to account. And that way you can. Yeah, each week have a topic and know what you want to. Now, whether or not it needs to be built out in the content, sometimes I'll just drop in like, oh, when we sit And I'll, I'll, you know, she's like, what are you saying? I'm like, well, in two weeks, I'll let you know what I'm going to say. I know, that's going to go. Well, that's kind of what I did. Like, I gave him more general topics, and then he can figure out what it's going to be right. and present it to it. Because if he was just, like, putting something out, and I'll like, I don't know if I love the wording of that. Right. You know, it's like, you know, thank you for doing that, but I'm like, man, I probably would have worded that differently. 
see that. You know, and you can go and check it before it posts. Yeah, you know, that's from trying to get typographical errors and you know things like that before it actually gets. Finished. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's always going to be something lost in translation. So copy and paste it in here and put it in Hootsuite. There may be some sort of error. So then once it's in there, I have some other people that can go in and look at it. It's like, oh, you know, you know, she missed yeah. all that. You need a period here, or whatever. So, so in Hootsuite. You can almost like create the post and then yes. like I could go in and look at it yes. and make like an editor or whatever yep. you want. And see that you four posts a month, month, you can only use the free version. We make so many posts that we've now started to pay for Hootsuite and we've got some other little advantages, but it's free. So yeah, I definitely suggest starting to use a platform where you can see the content. You can also change it. You can delete it. You can schedule the exact time. It'll tell you. So when you go to the bottom, you put in your information and you put in what channel you want to put it on, um, and then it shows you what it looks like on the side. And then you go down to the bottom and it'll ask you, what time do you want to post this? And I'll say, Tuesday at 9.42. And it says, oh, we recommend you post this between 9 and 11. So it tells me like a range, and then I select it, and it's it's up there. And okay. it, it'll post. Would you put the same, so for us, since we're trying to reach an older demographic, like business owners and C-suite level, would you, and so we use Facebook and LinkedIn. Would you post the same content same day, or would you do like a Tuesday, Thursday, or like? Or you could, you but not as would you like mix up what the weeks? We've so actually tried both of those. Um, it gets really confusing when you have so many platforms and so much information. But in your situation where you're only posting, I would definitely recommend separating it, like doing it on different times. Okay. Um, but then in the other and the other scheme is that. Instagram is more younger, Facebook is a little older, so I'm on Instagram, I may not ever see your Facebook post. So if you do it at the same time, and put it out, then you're going to catch those people. But yeah, so I would say in your situation, you could separate it as long as it's on every channel. And if you wanted to as well, um, each social media platform is going to have its own objective. So you may have a different objective as far as reach on Facebook because you see that's a kind of like a bigger platform for you, but you're like, okay, well, this isn't as big as a platform. So you want to make your objective measurable, you know, realistic of what's your reach going to be with LinkedIn. And then that may help you decide what kind of content, you know, if you want to do a higher reach, well, how can you make your content different? So creating that kind of like social media plan would be beneficial. Hey, so like when Tyler goes and post the videos or pictures on Chambers uh, sites for this. Do you go back and share it as an organization? This, this. presentation. Like people um, here, like, thank you for posting this. We had a great time. So, share. Yes and no. This, I don't know because I don't know how that would benefit the hospital and so I'm saying like we're just teaching social media. I don't know how that would come back to get us more Patience, which is our goal. So maybe not that, but there. if we, yeah, that's true. We that's did true. this to the community and helped out. That's true. Like, I will share. For dollars. My question with that is: Does the share show up? Like, do you? Does that go into Hootsuite and share? Yeah. Give you well, feedback it, as a share. It, it shows, shows the analytics. Yes. Yes. yes, it shows when we're mentioning a post, and it'll show the posts that were mentioned. In. Yes. Like and you whatever. share it and hit post. Like you share it, put some feedback, words, hashtags. Yeah, and yeah. you know the other thing is the share it in the local businesses. It makes us more relatable. It makes us show that we're in the community doing things. So, so yes, it may not get us patients, but it shows that yeah. we're out doing other things. If we have an event and somebody tags us, I'll always share that, saying thanks so much for you know having us at your event. Or it just kind of makes us show that we're all working together as a community. It makes us more. If anybody wants to share the post today. <laughs> if everybody can share this post. Like, yes. Facebook's get down to where like you can see when somebody likes something. So even if they like love the post that Tyler did, it'll show that they like this post. Yes. And, and I'll definitely go on there and comment. Thanks so much, Shaver, for you know, for having us, because then that'll show up too. So and I will say too that. that I do have a list in my office for some of the top pages in our community. So anytime that they can share a post, like if we're working with like HDB or the sheriff office or something, and you know they're doing an event with us, I'm gonna be like, hey, can you share this on your page and stuff too? Because those are some of the top lights um, pages in our community. Yeah. So definitely um, recognizing that. But yeah, I mean. What I say to every chamber member, um, as far as like in the, the orientations and stuff, is that if you have if you have a post and you want us to share it, let me know because I'll share it. 
you know, because it's going to reach out to maybe a different type of audience than you have that you want to reach out to. And we have several businesses that you have to possibly partner with on the Chamber page. So sharing is very important. Sharing is caring. Sharing is caring. <laughs> and it's important to have those partners in the community, too, because yeah. we're so close-knit. We actually did that with our brand. We reached out to, like, you know, the government, um, TPCG, some other uh, bigger names in the area, just to say, hey, do you mind sharing our new name change? And right when we did our rebrand. Yeah. So it definitely helps. I have so, another question. It's kind of... Similar, but not. Um, when trying to decide, like, I feel like we know what to post on a post, right? Like, it has to have some meat behind it. But say, like, I just go to an event or something like that. Like, do you feel like posting to your story if you're not, like, big on dog, just like a little small company? <laughs> like, do you think it's even beneficial? You oh, know, like, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, the other day, like, I, I can't you know, they have a horse to some of for an event I went to. Like, I was like, oh, maybe it's just a picture of, like, me, like, nailing it off. And that's not worth, like, a pose. But I was like, is it worth putting it to your story? Yeah. Um, it's um, sure. You're yeah. definitely reaching somebody, even if you reach one person. Mm -hmm. like, yes. Okay. Always. You can do, I mean, that's kind of a little bit more in-the-moment type thing. Mm -hmm. Capital. Yeah. yeah. Insta. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's not like, <laughs> and it makes you more relatable. Mm -hmm. I think that the, even posts like that. Um, it makes it look like yeah. you're a real person versus like a company or a stock image. Mm -hmm. To me, that feels so cold. So I like the idea of that. And we do try and use a lot of people. Um, and that's, I don't know if that's in square or Yeah, but yeah. A lot more. we always, um, people is what people want to see. Basis. Anybody in the people area? Can. Yeah. So if I use a stock image versus uh, a local person, it's amazing the difference of so yeah, people want to see people they know. So, um, so oh, this, this is a list of what I kind of use as my guide when I go to my calendar to set up. I know that we're going to need to do something about the brand that month. We need to hit our service lines. Um, we need to make sure everybody is being mentioned so that they don't get forgotten about. Our clinics, those are money drivers, so we need to make sure we're talking about our clinics. Any events we have, they went away for a while, but they're back. So uh, events always bring people in. We want to make sure we're getting those messaging out there. Um, and then we can do any sort of health education and awareness. I look at a, a, a calendar and I find out what health tips or health awareness it is that month and then what it goes back to. So say it's breast cancer awareness, it's October. I need to make sure I have a couple posts on that. Um, just anything health-wise that's going to tie it back to the hospital, I need to make sure that's part of the content. And then awards, which is uh, things that we give out at the hospital. We have about 1,500 employees or more. So we do awards every month, and those are people that are average Joes around town, and people want to see that. So like I said, I'll put those maybe on the weekend that kind of drive some engagement there. Um, and then I also run an employee Facebook. We've started an employee Facebook. We used to do a, um, a monthly like printout, and it became too late. It, it was like... Uh, we would print who had a baby, who got married, but by the time it was printed, the baby was six or <laughs> not six, <laughs> not six months. So this became more real time. Um, it's been kind of a fun engagement for our employees. Uh, someone would be like, hey, I found this earring in the parking garage. Is this anybody's? You know, just little things. Or so and so won the um, employee of the month. And then I'll go to the actual employee of the month and I'll video it. So they can actually get to see something that's going on in the hospital that, that they may not be able to attend. So it kind of brings everybody together and kind of um, is a great little community for us to, to talk amongst ourselves. Um, so those are the two things. Um, the brand, when I talk about putting stuff in the brand, we have a graphics designer in-house and he creates all of our ads. So we have standards that we have to hit. Um, it has to be the right color, it has to have the right space around the logo, everything. It's more of a science than you think. So we have paid a company when we changed our name to come up with this, um, these standards and the net and the color and the logo and all that. So all those things have to be hit. We have to make sure that photography is right and we've got different um, demographics in our, you know, because we have lots of people in the community. We need to make sure our ads are, are reaching everyone, that we're not just showing only white females, that we've got, you know, everyone across the board and everybody feels um, like they get a patient for our physical set. Yes. Um, this is our service line marketing. We, like I said, we do 
Wellness Wednesday post. We have a wellness department that helps supply information on the things that they're doing. We have a hashtag that we use. We call it Wellness Wednesdays. Um, and every Wednesday, you'll find a post about some of the things that they're doing out in the community. We also started this hashtag, Born at the Bayou's Best, um, because we were recently awarded the Bayou's Best Place to Have a Baby. So we have onesies made, and anybody that has a baby at our hospital is given a onesie. So we're trying to get people to post pictures in their babies in the onesies. Um, and this was somebody that posted it, and we reshared it. So that helps to kind of pull the uh, community in, and, and just fun. You know, I have a baby. I want my baby to be on their baby too. So um, anyway, kind of helps to get the community involved. And right, you need that interaction. Um, I talked about clinics. These are our doctors. Um, we did a campaign for all of it, so we helped to use that, um, or we use that for social media as well, so that it all looked uniform. Um, we want to make it relatable. We want people to see the doctor that they're going to see. We don't want to use a soft image of a doctor. Um, we want them to say, oh, I know exactly what Dr. Ben did. I saw her on the billboard. I saw her on social media. And then I go into her office, and I say, oh, yeah, I saw you on the billboard. So uh, another thing about the billboard, people always say that. I saw you on the billboard. So maybe put a person up there, that, uh, <laughs> that may help. Um, we also do the health education awareness, like I said, to your health. We partner with HGV and they film these series. Uh, oh, Rhonda is our host. Uh, if you've never seen it, you can log on to our Facebook page um, or our YouTube channel. And um, we get doctors in different health awareness subjects. So it's like a seven minute segment. HGV plays it. We try and it's just to get some health education out there. And again, make these doctors more relatable. So that's that. And then the awards, um, we have a couple different awards, Employee of the Month. We have a lot of flower awards now. I always call them, we have a daisy and a sunflower. So it's kind of each department. The daisy goes to the nurses. The sunflower is the, um, yes, a non-clinical person. And then we have leader of the quarter and Employee of the Month, which we need about. But people love to see their, their picture and, and know what they do and where they work. So it just kind of makes it fun. Um, for the community to see people that they know. <clears throat> That's it. Any questions? How many consistent active hashtags do you all keep running on your social media? Not a ton. Um, I feel like hashtags are kind of dying out. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning well, of social media, media, it was like, you have to have 72 yeah. hashtags, which <laughs> as a consumer, sometimes I'll go and search a hashtag, and that does kind of help you. Um, I don't know how many people are really clicking hashtags anymore. Before you put a hashtag out there, what I would suggest is seeing how many posts are using that hashtag because yes. you want to try to make it unique, and I think that's when it's beneficial that you can search that hashtag and you're going to see your post, whereas like if you search hashtag Louisiana, there's yeah. going to be a ton so of posts it's, before it's yours on a daily basis. So yeah, the Wellness Wednesdays, I'm sure other people are using that, but that's just something, I mean, we're a health center, so... We, you know, we use that, and then the born of the body's best, um, we call this one, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to see all of our pictures on the hashtag. So. so really just like the one specific, like, is it just like Terrebonne General Health System, which I'll stick to? No, we don't even use Terrebonne General Health System. Um, it says it's under our page. I don't know if people would search that hashtag. Um, we, yeah, I think just for... Yeah, we, we also have done uh, TG Cares, which yeah. if we do it, like giving back, or, or like if I shared this, I would say, oh, TG Cares, like Terrible General Cares. Like, we care about the community. So that's another hashtag that we've used. Um, but again, I feel like it's kind of ran its course. Uh, do y'all use hashtags with high school? Um, we we do our terriers together. Yeah. But it's very specific to, you know, ours are more for like, Kind of like you said, wellness one day. Like we do Terry Pride Thursday, but it's not really a searchable hashtag. It's more like we do these on Thursdays, and this is what we call. Well, it. so that's with the wellness. Yeah, so exactly. it's not. It's just we don't put them out there for to be searched. We put them out there for ourselves. Yeah. What do you say? Just like one of them. So he just said that it's not a good idea to hashtag something with one or two million views. Like I, my my nonprofit is is for better, right? So when I do something, I go hashtag better for. PTSD or better suicide. I try to find something with 1.5 million people tagging that. That's not going to do. He's saying the more generic it is, you're going to have a ton of posts under there. So maybe try to come up with something a little bit more unique. Because the issue with that is that your post is going to get lost. Correct. And if you're hashtagging it, it, I mean, you're wanting it to be seen. 
if, with that hashtag. So if you post with like five billion people, odds are it's going to get lost. But what if a hashtag, a hashtag definition, mm-hmm. that a hashtag better suicide or PTSD? Mm-hmm. At least the hashtag for my nonprofit is solo. But I'm trying to throw it out there. Well, it's got a chance to hit the whole veterans. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it hurts. I don't think it says not necessary. Yeah, you can do yeah. What it what it might benefit and um it, it might benefit the algorithm. So the algorithm, I mean, y'all have y'all heard me talk about algorithms, how it's ever changing. If you have that hashtag, that may benefit an algorithm for someone who may be looking at something that has to do with veterans. It may bring up the algorithm. Yeah. So it could yeah. benefit the algorithm, but um, don't do an overflow of hashtags if you do do that, because then that's going to mess up the algorithm. You see what I'm saying? So you want to keep it kind of like, if you're going to do a hashtag with 5 billion, keep it kind of like only a few hashtags. Maybe like one, two, or three. Like after the mission and then PTSD or something. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. You got that? <laughs> 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 All right. In-house versus outsource. What should you do? Well, of course, if you have a huge budget, hey, let somebody else take care of that for you. I mean, that's their expertise. But here's, I've done both. We have done both at Terrapin in general. And currently we are um, using in-house work that's done as go-from job. So I um, feel like it has worked very well for us. And it's more real time. If something happens, things happen all every day that we're like, oh, we need to, like our great clinic was closed on Wednesday. Can you post that? Can you see? So just having somebody there in the office to do things real time is very beneficial. So these are some other reasons. I mean, you know, they know what the brand is. They are able to develop the content based on, you know, what we're meeting about in our monthly and uh, weekly meetings for marketing. They know what's coming up this week. They know what's coming up for the month, so they have good working knowledge of that. They know the brand. They know what photos we use, the messaging we're trying to get across, what our mission is, what our vision is. I mean, you can relate that to another an agency, but you know, when you have somebody on the side, I think it works well. Um, again, adapt to change, more personal relationship with the employees, and um, and they know our customers too. So, and the content is so like some content. That means like people, um, we would have someone on the team doing that social media as opposed to someone out in the right. Okay, so, I right. understand. Like gotcha. an agency or you hire sure. a contract worker gotcha. or something yeah, like that. And if um also um if if you aren't a, aren't in a position to hire someone to do social media, um utilizing interns too is also important. Maybe someone who's going to school for like mass communication or something like that. Utilizing those interns. I actually interned at Terrible in general. Um gosh, it was, <laughs> feels like it's been in 2019, I wanna say I yeah. interned for Terrible in general. So utilizing those interns are very important. We have an intern here at the chamber as well, and you know they're they're wanting experience. So if they, if you don't have an Instagram, you're like, hey, I want to start getting on Instagram. Maybe that could be a good way of getting that intern experience. Right, because good point. Because they're learning about them, right? And they're young usually, so yeah, pretty know about later. Pretty well. well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you want to go the outsourced road, um, I mean, it's good because of like you dedicated professional that that's all that they do. Um, they can just take that off your plate for you, the whole Facebook, Instagram, whatever social media you use. Um, you know, they're constantly developing um, their expertise. And as I said, they're just a dedicated professional. But just keep this in mind, it gives you an opportunity to focus on other things as well. But somebody still has to yes. give them the topics that are going on, the events that are happening fill them in on what the brain is. So they have to have an education about your business before they can just take it. Yes. So, so you have to spend time. Like is them. rushing, do you provide content to rushing or do you tell them what's coming up or do you just have free writing to? I usually send them a couple of pictures with basically just showing the same ad. Gotcha. Yeah. It's basically the same ad of when I send them updated stuff, but it's, it's pretty simple. Right. Be cutting trees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and if, you do, if you have that social media calendar, you can plan it with them in advance. They're going to send you the content that they're going to post in advance, but somebody still has to take the time to let them know what's going on. So, either way, at least you got the social media presence. Okay. So, yeah. um, 
my side hustle, because I work at a nonprofit, I have a side hustle. Um, I do social media, I manage social media accounts for a very small marketing firm there in Oklahoma. And um, shout out to your marketing. Um, so when I run somebody's, when I run a business social media page, they tell me what they want to cover. They tell me like what's happening on certain days and I'll make sure that's included in my calendar. And that's something like if they're outsourcing, you definitely want to have to see those posts before. So I know they are okay with those posts. But you, you provide the content. It's kind of like at work. Still you say, yeah. this is what I want to do, but right. you, you, they make that happen. Exactly. Yeah. And it's still work involved. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, sorry. <laughs> Quick question. Okay. For um, Terrible in general, um, during like hurricanes and stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Whenever, I know the last hurricane knocked out Wi-Fi, knocked out cell service. So as far as social media goes, how did y'all handle that situation? Did y'all have a plan put into place beforehand? No, we'll have to be honest. <laughs> that was the first time we uh, ever but we figured it out. But like we still posted. I mean, yeah, we, we weren't doing our average content. It was right. what people wanted to see, and we had to be very um, sensitive to the community. So right. mm -hmm. um, it was tricky because we had to... Make sure we were putting stuff out and how we were being helpful, but yet we still needed help. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> I mean, we were giving tips on like, how do you clean out your freezer? Yeah, we were trying to just and things like that it. and resources. You know, whenever updates about electricity and yeah, we were trying to be a resource yeah. um, and while still trying to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and then we were in different places, yes. so we were always like, on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> how do you handle engaging? Because I know one of the recommendations is. Make sure you engage with your audience. How do you recommend engaging with people during that time, especially from your perspective, where people were, I'm sure, demanding answers of, you know, when are you opening or when can we come or when can we do this? Like, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we so, opened pretty close. I mean, it was, it was a matter of days, um, and we had emergency services available. And then in like a week or so, I'm um, just not in that page. No, we tried to provide other information, like helpful information that they would need. Once you survive the hurricane, yeah, know, just resources. Not so much help related, like, just yeah. like she said, it was other how to um, make sure that they might tips about living with a generator or um, you know, cleaning out your fridge and still being, you know, yeah. smart about it. Um, because yeah. we knew that they were sharing content, having yeah. people that had resources. I mean, everyone was coming together more as a community and not so much as just help wise, um, just trying to be a resource. People. And right. then every and time we had a service come online, make sure that that right. was communicated out. That we now are offering emergency services, and we're now offering um, the clinic service. Yeah, I mean, we actually did community outreach during this time too. We had um, a medical team that went out, and we had vaccines being given, like emergency medicine care, urgent care. Yeah, we had a bus yeah. that went down. We yeah, had people. so we were seeing people, so we tried to be. So, okay, real quick, we're going to go over just our rebranding. So, everybody hopefully knows that we changed our name to Terra General Health System. I know we're still very well known as CGMC, but we're trying to change our mind mindset. So, we thought it was fun um, to do like a teaser campaign to get people kind of wondering, oh, what's going on? So, this is just a calendar that we had. Um, our announcement post was going to be on the 20th of April. So a couple of days before <coughs> Friday before we started with some teasers, like, hey, this is coming. Um, and then we made the announcement, and then we built the campaign. Like, okay, this is what our new name means. It means, you know, we have a new era in healthcare. We have new services that are going to come online. We also launched a website at the same time as our new Crazy, but um, we managed to do it, and that way we could have a whole new look and feel. So um, we just went ahead with like a two-week social campaign that went with our other media campaign. And then these are just the, at the teaser ads. We were at Terrible General Hospital, then we were at Terrible General Medical Center. You know, we can't wait to show you what's coming. And then we did like a little word search thing, and in there it had the name. And, um, Nobody figured that out. I still can't figure yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. And then we made the announcement. And as I said, like after the rebrand day when we made the name announcement, we just kept explaining what it means, new ways to serve you, to help you, um, and that kind of thing. So that was a really fun campaign. Any questions about that? 
I have a question. It's kind of, kind of not, but it's around brand. Um, a lot of things that I do, I either will post to our 